Two of the easiest edible fungi to cultivate in Hawaii are shiitake, also known as Lentinula edoides, and king stropharia, also known as Stropharia rugoso annulata. Here are some terms that every mushroom farmer should know. Globally, there are more than a million species of fungi. However, only about 10% of these fungi form the fruiting body known as a mushroom. Only 5% of all mushrooms are considered high quality edibles. Both of these mushrooms are species of saprophytic fungi, meaning they consume the dead organic matter of wood, leaves, and other parts of plants. Generally speaking, it's best to cultivate shiitake mushrooms on hardwood logs that have been cut at least one week prior to the inoculation date to allow the antifungal compounds in the wood to dissipate. However, logs that have been downed for longer than one month likely have already become colonized by wild competitor fungi. Choose logs that are between 4 and 8 inches in diameter. Cut them into 3 to 4 foot lengths for ease of handling. Despite these more manageable log lengths, each log will still weigh approximately 30 pounds. Shiitake fungi typically prefer growing on non-coniferous hardwood logs, other than fruit trees. When setting up even a modestly sized commercial mushroom log operation of, say, 300 to 600 logs, consider where the logs will be sourced from. Do you, or perhaps a neighbor, have an existing timber stand of non-native trees that need to be thinned? Inoculation is the process of introducing the spawn into the substrate, the fungi's new food source. Using a corded drill, insert a 1 inch deep hole with a 5 16th inch drill bit into the wood substrate. Our goal? To fully infect the log with our preferred edible fungus. An angle grinder retrofitted with an adapter to hold the screw tip bit speeds up the log drilling process considerably. Wooden dowels colonized with shiitake mycelium are inserted into each drilled hole using a hammer or rubber mallet. Be sure to cover each inoculation point in the log with wax to prevent competitor fungi from entering into the wood. Beeswax and soy-based wax work just fine. However, don't use paraffin wax as it doesn't stick to the log very well. A second-hand crock pot is an excellent tool for melting large quantities of wax. Also, be sure to label the log with the particular mushroom species, the type of log, and also the date of your inoculation endeavor. This will help you keep track of when the logs are ready to fruit out mushrooms for harvest. Once the logs have been inoculated, waxed, and labeled, store them in an area protected from direct sun, preferably under the full shade of trees. A Lincoln log stacking pattern works quite well. Mushroom logs are an excellent example of a non-timber forest product that can be integrated into existing forests. These shiitake mushrooms are emerging from the wood of an acacia koa tree that blew down in a windstorm 
in Volcano Village on Hawaii Island. The yield of mushroom logs will vary depending on the species of wood used and also the size of the log and the environment in which the mushrooms are grown. The emergence of the mushroom body can sometimes happen unexpectedly. However, you can also encourage your logs to produce mushrooms by soaking the logs in a large container of water for 12 to 24 hours. A 200 to 500 gallon cattle trough works well for this purpose. Mushroom logs can be forced to fruit multiple times during a harvest season. Allow the logs to rest for about seven weeks prior to initiating another round of fruiting, again by soaking the logs in water for a full day. Be sure to use non-chlorinated water, as chlorine can potentially damage the living tissue of the edible fungus. If this is not possible, leave your tap water in an open container for 24 hours so the chlorine can off-gas. What other exotic, non-preferred tree species in Hawaii might also be suitable for mushroom cultivation? It's very important that the mushroom logs not be allowed to dry out. During periods of dry weather lasting more than a week, fully drench the logs with water for 30 seconds once per week to ensure the mycelium stays hydrated. Since shiitake mycelium prefers to consume hardwood species, shiitake might be able to be cultivated on non-native acacia trees such as Formosa koa. Kingstrophoria is a type of saprophytic or wood decomposing fungi. The fungi mycelium can be thought of as an external stomach that feeds on dead wood chips, logs, and branches, breaking down lignin, which is the hardening agent in wood, and also cellulose, which is the main component of plant cell walls, into simpler compounds such as chitin, polysaccharides, proteins and enzymes that can be food for your primary crop. For a three foot wide garden bed this size, you'll need two buckets of hardwood sawdust spread over the soil surface. The sawdust allows for ample surface area for the mycelium to colonize. Additionally, we need sawdust spawn from a sterile lab. This lab is from the mainland. We don't currently have a sterile lab for producing mycelium in the islands yet. The usual ratio of sawdust spawn to material that is colonized is five parts fresh material in the form of sawdust and wood chips to one part mycelium. Surface area is our ally in this process, breaking up the sawdust spawn is an important part of inoculation. Similar to making a sourdough culture or any other type of cultured food product in the kitchen, you want to have as many surface contact points as possible. Eventually the mycelium will colonize the sawdust, making its way down into the soil surface where it prefers to set up residency for most of its mycelium.
sometimes it's good to create patches, thick patches of sawdust spawn that can then spread out from those islands colonizing other areas of the mycelium fungi bed. Eventually, as the spawn runs across the food surface, it will become one organism. The last layer is a layer of hardwood, non-coniferous wood chips in a two to three inch layer. Again, this system can be overlaid into existing garden and farm bed operations, serving as a living mulch and biological irrigation system, especially important for no-till forms of agriculture, such as multi-year vegetables. Lastly, we water the sawdust spawn deep into the wood chips. This might also involve mixing the top layer into the lower layers. It will take between three and six months for the King Strafaria fungus to fully colonize the wood chips. Mushrooms will then begin to emerge. Three foot by three foot beds can sometimes yield a couple of pounds of King Strafaria all at once, often after heavy rain events. Beds of this size will yield mushrooms for one to two years. However, you will need to feed the Stropharia mycelium additional wood chips once yearly to ensure future crops. As an alternative to purchasing King Stropharia sawdust spawn each year, you can grow out your own wood chip spawn on virgin wood chips with your preferred edible fungus. Again, we observe the 5 to 1 ratio of 5 parts fresh wood chips to 1 part wood chip spawn. It's best to not fill the wood chips all the way to the top of the bin to allow for healthy gaseous exchange. Placing the lid lightly on the top allows for the mycelium to breathe. Mycelium, just like humans, inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. The bins can be stored indoors, out of direct sunlight. Fresh wood chips contain an almost ideal amount of moisture for mycelium to thrive and expand. No additional watering will be necessary. Within five months, the wood chips will have become fully infused with King Stropharia mycelium, at which point you can use the colonized wood chips as spawn to grow out a new King Stropharia mushroom bed. Happy growing!